Hi everyone, welcome to another video in this um, Ivy and the Inky Butterfly series. Now today I'm going to be colouring this um, piece here. So it's a, hard to see far away but we've got lanterns and vines. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I thought it would be, um, I'm just going to erase a little bit here. There's some bit of colour transfer from the um, opposite page. Um, I think we're going to do all the lanterns very similar and um, probably the same as much as we can. They're all slightly different and uh, all the vine and leaves the same and then I'll think about a sort of background afterwards. Sometimes with lanterns it's a little tricky because you've got to think about light, things like that. <clears throat> so we'll just do it one step at a time. I think we'll actually start with the vines because that's probably the easiest bit. I'm just going to zoom right in and then adjust just checking my um, lamp is on, which it is. So let's start at the top and we need some greens. Using my polychromos again, I think I'm going to do the main stem of the vine in quite a dark green. Um, probably not that one though. I'm looking for a specific green. Yes, I'm looking for the dark thalo green. That's where I'm going to start. Now you'll have to forgive me if I keep forgetting to move the page because uh, you know what I'm like, I tend to forget. Now my aim is to get the main vine just with the dark layer of the green. <clears throat> so I'm going to just colour that. Sorry for the coughing, I just had a bit of a tickly throat and uh, I think it's just um, making me cough a little bit. And take a little bit at the bottom of each leaf with this colour as well as we go and then we'll uh, finish those off in a bit. I'm going to layer this up quite a bit because I'm not going to add another colour. Obviously um, polychromos like to be layered and we don't have to layer up lots of different colours or shade. We can just layer up a deep dark layer like this. <clears throat> I can hear my tumble dryer making a really loud noise. I'm hoping it's not too noisy for you guys. I don't. It's quite in the distance. Um, I don't know why it's so noisy. I just put the towels in there. It sounds like there's a sort of metal weight. <laughs> I'm sure there isn't. Anyway, it's a quiet Saturday morning today, recording this. The children are doing homework or revision. So I thought I would nip in and record a little video. I was in the mood for doing some. And my husband's out. So it seemed like a good opportunity just get a little one done. Oh, I say little. Oh, let's move you up so you can see. There we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I don't know if this is going to be little. I think it will take some time. But that's okay. But uh, I've just been writing my newsletter. Um, so this video will come out way after <laughs> the newsletter. But I did, um, in the newsletter, say that this would be coming out. So uh, I let you know in advance. I'm just going to push that right up there like that. <clears throat> now where these over the vines overlap things, when I watched Johanna Basford, she'd make that bit a little bit darker. You can do that if you want. Now I want a really solid green myself. You don't have to do it this way. Or you could make a darker patch with, say, your um, a deep cobalt green if you wanted to just do a little bit of shadow in there or even a bit of black or dark sepia something I think black would be better dark sepia is a bit browny and this green isn't really um, got a lot of brown in it or oh, doesn't sort of feel brownish to me <clears throat> I keep meaning to have a look at the colours of the cabinets that have been chosen and uh, let you know what they're going to be um, for the new kitchen. Um, it's quite exciting. They're really quite dark. I think the deep cobalt green, this one, would be the colour of the green one. And the, um, the other one is a really deep, my husband says purple, I say pink. It's got a bit of blue in so it's probably is purple. But it's, um, it's the sort of shade that Arteza called purple. But I, I always think it's a bit more towards pink. I don't have that colour here in the, um, <clears throat> in the polychromos. 
it's really quite dark it's probably more of a whoops not not really that <laughs> that's the sort of closest I can find but it isn't that it's uh oh I don't know <laughs> it's a pinker version of that so it doesn't look brown like I think those do oh I don't know um I've been asked by several people for before and after video or picture oh it's pouring with rain um so I'll see what I can do. I'll, uh, we haven't got any appointments or anything yet for anything to, to even have our first meeting with the builder. So it's a long way off really, um, I think. But uh, it's just so much planning that sort of has to go into it beforehand that, you know, I'm sort of thinking about all sorts of things. You know, planning videos for you guys, planning meals for the kids, children what am i gonna do with all the stuff my tumble dryer's beeping at me <laughs> i don't know if you can hear it along with the rain it's a bit noisy today if the tumble dryer gets some i i doubt the children will go and see to it so i may have to they are i'm busy anyway i'm just gonna push right up to the bottom so i don't forget <clears throat> they are um um, yeah, my one son's doing his computing homework. He was getting it all wrong, he thought, and, and then he suddenly realised that he was looking at the wrong answers. And he's getting there, so that's good. He's finding it a bit tricky, but he seems to be on, on it now. I don't know if you can hear the rain now on the window. My other son is revising, I think, for his physics exam. But my plan in when they're on a holiday is to probably record videos when they're recording videos or when they're chatting to their friends or when they're um, um, just um, generally busy with other things and um, aren't going to really talk to me. I'm trying to decide what colour green to do for the tip. We can choose either the light phthalo green which is really quite pale, or just the um, phthalo green, which I don't think is that different to this one. I'm going to try the light, I think. I've forgotten my notebook. I always forget something um, when I come in to record. And my notebook, I always write down the colours that I've used. Let's try and see. Oh yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, um, because if I do three or four videos in it one go, I have to note down what colours I've used. Oh, there goes the tumble dryer beeping again. It might be the washing machine actually. I can't think. I put on both. Oh, there we go. Weekends always catching up with the chores. Although I do try and keep on top of them all week. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is when I finish doing these leaves I'm going to go down and attend to it all and grab my notebook and then come back I think I don't I think the I can hear the water going through the boiler so I think the washing machine must still be on that must be the dryer that I can hear <clears throat> I don't use my dryer that much it seems to shrink all the clothes being tall, we don't like things like our trousers or even our tops. Me and my one son have got long bodies. If our tops or trousers shrink, <laughs> we will reveal ankles and bellies. Not something people want to see. Well, ankles isn't too offensive, but it just uh, it doesn't look very good. Right, I'm done with that. I'm going to go off and be back. Right, I am back. Um, you may have noticed a bit of a change in the light. The sun was pouring in as I came back in, so I thought I would just close the blind because it was sort of across the page. And I also find that very distracting. Now, candles. Um, I've decided that I would quite like the candle holders to be grey, sort of like a silvery or pewtery type material. Um, so maybe we'll do that next. 
and then I'm just trying to think ahead a bit of what else I'm doing but I think we'll just start with these and I'm thinking the Payne's Grey might be a nice place to start I can't get the um, um now Payne's Grey is a purpley grey I'm gonna do a little bit at the bottom of there up to the top and uh, it's a rather pretty shade I think so I'm trying to leave a little bit of white shine on everything it's quite tricky on a smaller area but say for this one I'm going to just bring it slowly in now I'm only going to use this one pencil I think and we don't have any sort of different shades of this grey colour we have different we have different cold greys it would probably work together with a cold grey quite well but uh, I think we can just get away with one pencil like that <clears throat> now maybe fade it like this now the art of getting something to look like it's actually shining is to leave some white and definitely leave some white don't just leave a pale bit actually leave some white it doesn't have to be loads but leave some white paper I thought I would do these first and then I'll decide on the background colour I'm really completely unsure as to what I'm going to do for that. So I'll show you on this one, the top one was so small. The idea is to try and make it darker here and lighter as you go up because it would be more likely that it would be more in the shade here. This piece I think I'm just going to incorporate into the roof part. I don't think roof is the right word but you know what I mean and just put a dark bit on each side and then just come in lightening as you go we can sort of see where the centre is going to be here where we want it to be the lightest anyway but I still find it a bit easier to come in from both sides bit by bit like that I think this side is darker than this side I'll just put a little bit more down and then this one like on the other so dark in the corners and then lighter as we go towards the centre and down here up from the bottom the same on this side it's really funny it was raining wasn't it just now I popped downstairs I just literally put the dryer back on because everything was still wet <clears throat> and uh, I've come back up and it's bright sunshine so as before, darker to lighter. This one's hard for you to see because it is so small. And I'm just going to fade it as we go towards the centre of this bit. You see I just put more layers on and less towards the middle. This is quite a small bit. A bit darker there and lighter up. And again we've got a rounded bit. I'm going to try and go around the edge darker in the centre but you see because it's small we've just ended up covering it all with grey not going to worry about it you can add you can try and erase you can add a little white highlight or like me you can just not worry and leave it it wouldn't all be catching the light would it so I'm sure it's fine I just do make sure I'm going to get some darker colour on the edges though it's the key really with um, metal is not only to leave the um, white for the shine but to make sure that you get a con big contrast between the light and the dark area there we go is this our last one? yes <clears throat> so we go from the bottom upwards like that and then one side of the top other side and just do less layers and bring it in gently like that across here we'll just fade towards the middle and then at the bottom fade towards the middle of this bit 
Now I'm trying to think about what sort of mood to make this bit. We've got this side on the one side it's quite scary with all the monsters and things and this side is the more positive happy side and but is this sort of candle light strip a sort of transition or should it just be bright and positive I'm not sure now we'll do the flames next now I do quite like doing several colors in the flame um, but they're quite small but we'll see what we can do. I still haven't got the right pencil sharpener in here. Never mind, that one's nice and sharp. So I'm going to use a little bit of orange. This is, oops, out of shot. This is the cadmium orange. And I'm going to try to do that at the bottom of the flame. And then fade it up towards the tip. And it's quite tricky to uh, see and do, but you need it to be very sharp. And you may not even notice when I'm done that there's two colours. But it's fun to have a go. And I'm going to use the dark cadmium yellow. Oh, there you go. For the rest. So I'm just going to go over the whole thing. Each flame with this one. Oops. Coming adrift. I've got a book under here, as I showed you maybe on day one. Coming, coming away. Okay, now in each of the little sections within the candle holder, whatever it is, I'm going to do quite a thick layer of yellow. Oops. <clears throat> what I'm hoping I can achieve, I'm not sure if it's going to work, is to make this look like it has a little piece of glass on the front of it. In order to do that, I need to put some white uh, sort of reflection lines on it. And those won't show up unless I've got a nice thick covering of pencil. So I'm going to just put down a really thick layer. Okay, like that. So I'm trying to build it up quite thickly. You might prefer to try to fade it Hang on. so that it's a little bit brighter, nearer to the flame, but that is a little bit complex for me and what I want to achieve. Sorry if we keep pushing up and down, but if I had cut, if I stayed zoomed right out, I think it would be hard to show you what I'm doing. We might do when we do the background bit might stay out I think probably will but uh, while we do these now we need to do the candles next I quite like them in white but we won't leave them white I'm thinking I'd like a sort of shine in the middle of each one and the best way I think for me to achieve that because I need a thick color as I said just now is to have two shades, a really dark and a really light, and then go from one to the other. I'm trying to think of a background colour which will match my candle at the same time. Now in our page on the other side we have a, a quite a few purple pinky backgrounds, we have a green and an orange, so I'm trying to think do we want something similar, different, um, Mm, yes, right, I've decided. It took us a big decision, wasn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, we'll do the candle in um, mauve and what's that one? Hang on, just look in my book. 138 Violet. So, mauve and violet, you can see why I struggled. And uh, Give them a sharpen. I think I've got some replacements for these, but uh, I will use them up before I replace them. So my aim, I think, is to take the violet and put it all over, but not too hard. Then get my mauve, put it on each edge and fade it towards the middle. 
So we've got a paler line, but it's still coloured in. We could go back over it a bit with the violet, like that. Okay. And it's really little, so it's hard to see. Anyway. So I'm not going to keep telling you the colour names. I'm using the mauve and the violet. The mauve is the darker one. The violet is the lighter one. Oh, my mauve is rolling towards my lap. <laughs> Hold it in my hand. So there it's our violet. There is our mauve. Gosh, this one's teeny weeny. And a bit of violet again. Whoop. We get no, we can't get two in a picture. Okay. So violet. Move. Oh. And this is the violet again. Right, now onto the background, and as I said before, I am going to come out a bit for that because I'm going to otherwise be shifting my book up and down all the time. I think it's going to be a bit irritating, so I shall keep it there. And I'm going to do some pinks, I think it would be nice. Um, I think I will start with the magenta and do the sort of outside edge in quite a hard layer. I think we did this with our dark indigo on this page and it sort of gives us a starting place really. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it similar to the other two that I've done. So we'll fade it towards the centre and that will not only help these um, um, the details to stand out, but it would also look like the uh, lanterns, the candles, giving out a bit of light, which obviously is the idea. Now I realise I haven't done these lines between the different sections on either this page or this page at the moment. My decision was always going to be that I would wait and uh, and see how um, see how it all looked and then decide on a colour. So I'll have to decide on that probably right at the end on the last video and think about it. But I'm sort of thinking all the time, but I keep changing my mind. I'm thinking, you know, probably a pen and a sort of solid colour I think would look best. Um, Posca pens work on this, these books without going through the page, so that would be a good choice. Um, and I would probably go for something either a black or <clears throat> um, or a silver or gold probably. I'm trying to just bring this in a bit and sort of fade it down. I hope you might be able to see what I'm doing. I'm just doing a lesser amount of colour. Now we don't have a uh, in between colour with the magenta, we just have a light. Uh, we have this magenta and we have magenta light, and I'm probably going to use the magenta light. And then, if I feel that we need a transitional colour, I shall pick something. But uh, we'll see how it pans out. Really, might find the magenta light will work well enough without needing anything else. My washing machine is beeping, but uh, I really don't want to stop again. We'll see. And then my boys will ignore it. <laughs> As I say, husband isn't here. He would, uh, he would go and attend to it. But uh, oh, there it goes. I don't know if you can hear it. Mm. Mind. 
really what I'm trying to do is to fade the colour in towards the centre and try to get rid of that hard edge. Obviously there it's a really hard edge, so just making it lighter so that it will blend nicely. And we'll decide um, whether it works just with the other colour in a moment. It's slipping off my book. Right, we are nearly there. I put a little bit in there, I think. Now we may need to go back over that, it was quite rough and quick. But this is our magenta light, or light magenta as it's called. You can see it's quite a lot lighter. But I'm going to go over the top of our magenta and just put that down. I'm going to layer it up quite a lot nearer to the edge and then reduce those layers towards the centre so that it goes from light to dark, I think. I'm going to put a little bit of magenta in this flower loop. Just so that it can... I think if you've got a transition of colour and it goes through a vine or any part of a picture, so you've got the one colour on one side mainly and the other on the other, it can look a little bit odd. So I just think if I take a little bit of the colour to the other side it won't look quite so odd. It's a bit hard to explain. Oh, the sun is still shining. I thought, knowing the weather today, maybe it would pour with rain in a minute. <laughs> it's very iffy. They've been predicting. Now here, I don't know how easy it is for you to see, there is a hard line. Maybe I will come in. Now I'm working my way down slowly. Maybe it makes sense for me to be in a bit closer. But here, look, can you see there's a line going from light to dark? So I'm just going to use the magenta to soften that a little bit. And then go back in with the light magenta and layer it over. And the same as I was saying about the vine here, I'm just going to put a bit of the magenta in. So that it doesn't look like it's just light magenta one side and magenta the other. Okay, let's go on down. And just keep going with our layering and colouring in. Now again, look, can you see we've got quite a line here, so just use the magenta to just gently soften it, put a bit more in. And it just takes a bit of patience to do it, but the joy of the polychromos is that you can layer and layer and so you can add a bit to get it looking a bit more like you want. Now polychromos backgrounds are quite time consuming because you do have to keep layering if you want it quite dark but um, I know a lot of people will use Prismas because they're, um, they do backgrounds a lot more quickly. And since having my Prismas, it was quite a revelation. I did a background in a Kirby Roseanne book with my Prismas, and it took such a small amount of time compared to... Like, had I done it with Polly's, it probably have taken me about six times longer, I would say, I guess. So uh, it, was, it was good. <laughs> but, uh, of course, you can't always do all the detailing you want with them. So I think it's quite nice having both, really. But uh, I am spoiled. I have both. I know not everyone has that luxury. Just put a bit of a magenta in there. But I think um, the backgrounds can look equally good once done. So um, it, it's up to you, 
you know you can still get if you've got polys and not prismas you can still get a nice background so as I say it just takes a little bit of time and perseverance but you can layer it up get it looking really nice there we go let's go up I think the sun's gone in now, but we'll stay behind the blind because it will pop out as soon as I open the blind. My husband's out while well, he's visiting someone, so he's got the car with him, so if it rains, he'll be okay. But he was thinking we've got our market on today, on the Saturday, and we have the farmer's market. He's thinking of the poor storeholders there and how they might be suffering. A lot of them are under a roof and others are under sort of canopy. Not too bad, but it does put off shoppers too. Right. Some people don't sort of go regularly, they just go when it's a nice day. Yeah. I expect that's the same with most markets. outdoors you sort of think about the weather don't you now quite often with them um, colouring it will be advised that you you do little circles for your background so that it looks neat now when I'm doing a small area I'm not quite so fussy but if this was a background on a page and on a whole page you know and there's lots of it then I find it harder to keep it neat so I use those little circles as a technique. I find it also quite tricky to keep a consistent pressure or amount of colour throughout the page. So I might find, say, my right hand page bit is much darker than the left. So uh, that's why I started taking to using pastels a little bit more. Because uh, I'm just going to sharpen. I find with pastels um, it's a bit easier to cover a large area more quickly and then you've got a bit more patience for getting it even. So it's all quite um, a lot the same here. And what I'm doing is I'm once I've done a bit of the pink I'm judging whether I think it needs a bit more of the magenta. Sorry, once I've done more of the light magenta, I judge whether I think it needs more of the dark. We might have a banging door now. My son's just gone into the room next door. Yeah. This is why I'm a bit concerned about recording when they're here. But uh, needs must when they're on holiday. I just have to ask him if he can be a bit more careful. But if he's in the middle of recording, then he'll be... Sorry, I just spotted a bit at the top that needed doing and uh, coloured off camera. But I'm covering off camera anyway, I'm sorry. What am I going to talk to you about while we finish this little bit? Hmm. I've just been writing a newsletter for you. You would have had that if you've signed up. Now, if you haven't signed up to my newsletters, you can do it using the link in the description of this video. If you um, don't want to sign up to my newsletter, that's absolutely fine. I completely understand. We get so many emails each day. It can be overwhelming. What I do is... A little later, after the newsletter's been out a while, I published them on my website because um, I quite understand that some people just don't want to um, be bombarded. Um, the only thing is, of course, you um, then don't sort of get a reminder to read it. And what's in the newsletter? I hear you cry. <laughs> um, well, I tend to put in some pictures of things that I've coloured. 
um, which I haven't yet shown anybody. Well, I say anybody, I've probably shown a few um, my family. Not that they are always that interested. My husband is the children. <laughs> Meh, mum's coloured something again. Um, so I put a few things, uh, I put a few pictures that I've coloured. I also sort of tell you what videos I might have coming up, things like that, which you might not have um, known, and any other little snippets of news. Um, so uh, it just really depends on what um, I've got going on. But. Uh, if, um, as I say, there on my website there's a section, if you go to the home page of the website, um, just follow the link in the description of the video, um, there is a section called archive newsletters and you can go and have a look at them. Um, I try not to send them out too often because um, I don't want you to be overwhelmed. So uh, usually um, once a fortnight, sometimes a bit um, less frequent, not usually if i act, if i feel the need that i really want to tell you something and uh, i send one out a little earlier i uh, then tend to leave it three weeks or so before the next one so that you get an average of two a month or so just to uh, try to make sure that you're not overwhelmed um so there's so i've been doing that this morning having writing that and uh, what else have I been doing today? Oh, on my website every Saturday I, if I remember, sometimes it's late, I post, it's going to sharpen again, I post links to all my tutorial videos that I've done that week in an article so that um, if you've missed any you can go and catch up with those. Um, obviously you can go on YouTube and look but sometimes it can be a little bit confusing. Um, if I've done any videos that are going to be premieres um, they come up before the videos that have been released already um, so that can make it a little bit confusing so I thought I would just put them in a um, put them in a little article so you can find them. Um, talking of premieres, I know people liked it when I did them and um, it's a possibility I might be able to do some again soonish. I'm thinking while well, I'm building works going on I, uh, I won't be making videos, I might have a little bit more time to do something like that but uh, we'll see. Sorry I need to zoom out so you can see what I'm doing. Um, but it sort of depends, really. Let's see, how much can you see? Not quite all of it. Oh, let's try and go the right way. <laughs> there we go. So what I'm going to do is use the magenta, the darker one, and just try and tidy up in a few places. Um, you may struggle to see what I'm quite doing because I'm so zoomed out, but... I'm just trying to blend it through a little bit so we've got no quick sort of light to dark so there's a quite a nice progression from one to the other so it just means putting a bit of this darker colour on top of some of the lighter colour really and it just takes a little bit of fiddling and because we've only got quite a small amount of background here I've got the patience to do this if it was a big page, I would probably have left it, to be honest. In fact, if it was a big page, I'd probably use more colours. It makes it easier to do a background if you've got a bigger transition of colour. So rather than just going from dark pink to light pink, have two or three in the middle. And then it flows better. But with this small bit I was confident that I could get it to work. Now of course here I'm looking, we've got our darker outside and our lighter middle, but there's this, you know, this isn't in the middle, it's on the side, so maybe that bit shouldn't have been quite so dark. But it depends how ultra fussy you're being. I'm not going to worry, you know me. Don't worry about little mistakes that you see. When you show it to somebody else, are they going to go, oh, that's a mistake. Maybe they will. If they do, don't show them anymore. No. 
We don't want people criticising our work. We can. It's easy enough to be self-critical, let alone have somebody else do it. Right, I am nearly done. Just fiddly fabbling. And we're going to do that glass with the white pen. Oops, I'm just making myself a bit of space. I'm going to come back in so you can see and decide if it's for you. I, I, I'm not even sure if it's going to show up, to be honest. Let's put it in the middle. I should have probably done that before. I'm going to shake up my pen. I'm using the Posca because it seems to... This particular Posca at the minute, it's got more ink in it, paint in it, so it's uh, it writes more reliably. And I'm going to go right across here, like that. Okay. And the same. Now you want to do the same direction on each one. Try and get a fair bit of white down and it's not going to show up brilliantly if you make sure you go across the candle then it will show up better because it's darker but once you start you have to carry on through so it's up to you whether you want to do that or not you might think it isn't really worth it yeah it's up to you but uh, let's have a look at it in sections because it's quite difficult to uh, see when it's far away so there's the top bit I've got my most pleased with the shading there and there's a sort of middle section and I think that's the end actually there we go so there it is in little sections and you can see it now I think this colour is a little more bright and positive than the colours on this side so I wonder it could be seen as a transition from the darker side to the lighter side but I think it's quite quite nice with being a pink it's a bit more positive I've been meaning to do a background in a sort of dark pink for a while I have never done one before so I thought it would be a bit of fun and we could probably do a sweeping this a bit but being really careful because I've got a wet pen yes careful but there we go I've got to go and sort out my washing machine it's, it's an exciting life isn't it <laughs> and uh, I hope that was okay for you today um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and happy colouring